Thank you for joining us for this presentation. My name is Karee Hamilton, and I'm a counselor with the Saracoso Tehachapi campus. And I'm Anna Carlson, an educational advisor for Saracoso Tehachapi. So in this presentation, we're going to discuss what concurrent and dual enrollment are, the benefits, some things to consider, the resources available, course recommendation, course restrictions, and what the next steps are in order to get started. So I'm going to start off the presentation and about halfway through, I'm going to turn it over to Anna and she will, she will present the remainder of the information. So first of all, what is dual and concurrent enrollment? Dual and concurrent enrollment is the opportunity for high school students to earn college credit while they're still in high school. The difference between the two are that at Saracosa, we offer dual enrollment. Dual enrollment is the classes that students take at the high school during their high school day. It's one of their high school class periods, and it's taught by a high school instructor who meets the minimum qualifica qualifications to teach our classes. Concurrent enrollment is completed on the student's own time after the high school day. Students can take classes at one of our Saracoso campuses or online. <clears throat> For either dual or concur concurrent enrollment, the enrollment fees are waived. That, uh, our fee currently is $46 a unit, and some of our classes do have material fees like art and welding. The material fees are not waived, so students will need to pay that if it's required for the class. There's also a $2 student representation charge to all college students, but this can be waived via a fee waiver available on our website. The other costs to consider um, are our textbooks. Many of our instructors have made great effort to reduce the cost of textbooks by offering free textbooks or reduced cost textbooks. If your student is participating in dual enrollment, the high school will give them a book. If your student is participating in concurrent enrollment, it's the responsibility of the student to purchase the textbook if it's required. So we think that dual and concurrent enrollment are a great opportunity for your students. And um, on the screen here is a list of the reasons why. It expands curriculum options. An example of this would be if the high school that your student attends does not have certain classes, for example, art, welding, or different language classes, then your students can take those classes with Saracoso. The other opportunity is to gain exposure to college and the college environment. When students are exposed to college early on while they're in high school, then there's no fear of the unknown and increases the likelihood that they'll continue on to college after high school. Some of our dual and concurrent enrollment options allow students to be career ready such as one of our short-term training opportunities like our medical assisting program, emergency medical technician program, welding, just to name a few. So depending on the program and the availability of classes, high school students could finish a short-term training opportunity by the time they finish high school and be ready to start their career. The other opportunity is that it saves money, music to your ears, right parent? As mentioned before, the $46 a unit tuition fees are waived. So essentially, the only cost are the textbook if your student is taking classes as a concurrent enrollment student. Remember, dual enrollment, the high school purchased the textbook. Depending on the number of college classes your student takes while in high school, it could save you quite a bit of money. So saving money is important, but equally important is saving time. If your student just takes a college, one college class while in high school, that could significantly reduce the cost of their overall college education. If they take four classes, that's equivalent to one semester. If they took eight classes, that's equivalent to two semesters or one year in, in college. So some high schools allow students to earn both high school and college credit. Many of the high schools that we work with allow students to take college classes and earn high school credit as well. For example, if a student takes U.S. history with us, it could potentially fulfill the high school U.S. history requirement as well. But this option will have to be discussed with the high school counselor. 
It makes an easier transition to college after high school. As mentioned before, students who have gained exposure to the college and college environment early on increase the likelihood that they will continue with college after high school. Students are aware of their potential and know that they can be successful in college classes because they've been going to college. So while we think dual and concurrent enrollment is a good opportunity, there are some things to consider before having your student take classes. Dual enrollment, again, are college classes your student takes during their high school day. It's one of their class periods. If the student is not doing well and decides to drop the college class, the student may not be able to get into a different high school class for that term, which could impact their schedule. They would need to discuss this with their high school counselor. Concurrent enrollment are the co college classes that your student takes outside of the high school day, either at one of our campuses or online. So and keep, keep in mind that college is not the same as high school. Concurrent enrollment high school students are in class with adults on campus and online and must adhere to the student conduct policy for the college. Students that take college classes online may think, wonderful, I can do this class whenever I want. The truth is online can be more time consuming than on campus classes. Online classes require a significant amount of reading and participation. And even though, yes, online is wonderful because you have the freedom to do classes when you want to, our online classes are not self-paced, which means um, there are deadlines to adhere to. Motivation and time management are key to being successful online. As mentioned before, college classes are different than high school classes and may be more challenging than what the student is used to. Therefore, if a student gets a B in college in a college class, which is a great grade, by the way, it could impact their cumulative high school GPA. Another thing to consider are the textbook costs. As I mentioned before, many of our instructors are trying to find low cost, no cost options for student textbooks. It sometimes cannot be done and textbooks can get expensive for concurrent enrollment students. Keep in mind that for both dual and concurrent enrollment, the student is creating their college transcript and grades in college are permanent and will follow the student wherever they go. And unsatisfactory grades may impact financial aid, scholarship opportunities, and, admit, and admittance to a university. We want all of our students to be successful and we have resources available to assist them. With college, stu college students are responsible for seeking out these support services, utilizing them in college, uh, we don't give progress reports, so if your student is struggling, have them talk to the high school counselor or the counselor advisor at the college. We are here to support students, but we don't know that they're struggling until they say something. So communication is important. Communication with the college counselors and advisors are important, but also communication with college instructors are equally important. Students need to let their know, need to let their instructors know if they're struggling or if they have questions or just even if they want to talk to the uh, discuss the class further. All instructors have office hours either before class or after class and can meet with students to discuss these issues. All of our campuses and online are equipped with a tutoring center, typically for math and English. I tell students that you don't have to be in English and math to access our tutors. If they have a history or psychology paper that needs to be reviewed, the English tutor can look at it. Or if they're trying to solve a math problem for one of their science classes, a math tutor can help. Tutoring is free for all students enrolled at Saracoso. Lastly, research papers are common in most of our college classes. So if your student has a research paper that they need to work on and they don't know how to get started, have them contact one of our librarians online or on campus. On the next screen, you'll see recommendations that we have for dual and concurrent enrollment. I'm only going to highlight a few of them. Um, so purchase the textbooks early. In college, students are expected to have their books and materials the first week of class. This again will be something to consider for concurrent enrollment students who are taking classes outside of the high school day. Students need to check their email regularly and even more so if they're taking classes online. 
the college email is one of the most important um, things to remember to check often because this is the only way that the college will communicate with the student. So if the student sends an email through his or her personal email, it may go unanswered. The reason behind this is we need to confirm who the student is and we can do this by them sending an email through their college email account. For online students, they must log into their classes on the first day of class. If they don't, then they may be dropped from the course. The syllabus is one of the most important documents that the student gets from their instructor on the first day of class. The syllabus outlines the class, expectations, grading policies, assignment information, due dates, just to name a few. So encourage your student to keep it handy throughout the semester. For study time, the rule of thumb is for um, how much study time to allow is that for each unit that the student is in, they should spend two to three hours um, per unit on classwork each week. For example, a three unit history class, a student should spend two, excuse me, six to nine hours outside of class doing homework. So roughly we say about an hour each day for each college class, if not more. If your student cannot dedicate that time to a college course, then they may want to wait until they can. Communicate problems immediately. We will not know anything is wrong until the student says something. Students who want to take online classes are strongly encouraged to take College 52. This is a three-week class, usually held before the semester starts. It's designed to teach students how to navigate their online classes and the expectations of being an online student. The limitation for class uh, for units each semester is typically 11 units. So usually a student has not granted 11 units their first semester, rather it's a progression of success. So usually we allow students to take a class their first semester with us, and then the next semester take two, and if successful, next take three. And so again, it's a progression of success, but not going over 11 units. Um, at Saracoso, we can recommend courses, but ultimately it's this decision made between the student and the high school counselor regarding what classes to take. College counselors and advisors are unfamiliar with the high school course requirements, so we will always refer you to talk to the high school counselor. Um, Anna is going to talk to you more in detail about why and when a student should drop or withdraw from a class. So, that, so that'll be a little later on. So not every Saracosa class is up for grabs. We do have restrictions on our classes, either due to course content, legislation or a department from the college has restrictions. You can see here some of the examples of what those restrictions are. And a more detailed list is in the dual and enrollment, dual and concurrent enrollment handbook, which Anna will discuss in more detail. We also have classes that we recommend to first time college students who are high school freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. We also have recommendations for students who have taken college courses previously. Again, a full list of our recommendations are in the handbook, and you can see here on the screen some of those recommendations. All right, so I'm going to pass it over to Anna. Thank you, Kareem. Um, so I'm going to discuss a little bit about why and when um, to drop a college class. Um, a student may wish to drop a class if something comes up that may prevent them from finishing the class or if they're certain that they're just going to receive an unsatisfactory grade in it. Um, so it may be better to drop the class than to receive an F in it. We want students to be aware of the drop dates for all courses because they may be different depending on when the course begins and ends, um, but the drop dates can be found on every syllabus. So every instructor should be listing the drop date um, so that's where they can find out what it is for each specific course. The syllabus is given to uh, students on the very first day of class, so they should be checking that um, immediately. Um, the two most important dates to keep in mind are the drop without a W date and the drop with a W date. If a student drops a course by the drop without a W date, there will be no record of them ever attempting the course. Um, if they drop 
by the job with a W date, the transcript will reflect that the student attempted the course but withdrew from it. So there's no impact on their GPA, um, but it does in, uh, impact their attempts and their progress. Um, so you get two attempts at a course, so if they withdraw from it, that would be considered one of their attempts. Beyond these dates, the students must take whatever grade they earn in the course. Um, and so if they do want to drop a class because they are a concurrent or dual enrollment student, um, they must contact the counseling department at the campus that works with your high school and um, we would have to withdraw them on our end. And we highly encourage students to discuss dropping their college course with their high school counselor prior to doing so um, to discuss the possible implica implications of dropping a college course on their high school progress. Okay, so um, what are the implications of a W, you might ask. So, you know, if they drop with a W, it's going to show on their transcripts. Um, there are various reasons a W may impact the student's high, high school progress um, if the course is needed to fulfill an A through G or other high school requirements. And the student may not be able to get into a, a replacement high school course if they drop the college course. Um, the W also remains on the college transcript, so it becomes a permanent part of a college record and it cannot be removed even if the course is completed in the future. The W is also an indicator of a student's academic progress. Um, it's not used in GPA calculation, like I said, but it is considered an attempt, so um, then can become an, a factor in it. And also, if they begin to excessively accumulate Ws, um, then that can result in probationary status. Um, it's also something that we take into consideration when approving future dual and concurrent enrollment courses. So if a student earns two Ws or a non-passing grade in a concurrent course, then we will not be able to enroll them in any further courses. Ws can also have an impact on future college admissions, and there's no real hard and fast rules for how universities will look at a W on a transcript but they may be a factor for highly selective colleges and universities. So it's just something that we want students to keep in mind um, to avoid accumulating a lot of them. One important thing to note is that Syracuse students, um, all high school students included, um, have privacy rights under FERPA, which is a federal law that we're held to even if they're minors. So they, we have no, um, they, they, we don't differentiate between a standard high school or college student and a high school student, even if they're minors. What this means is that we can't share any information about the student with anyone other than the student without their express written consent. And this unfortunately means not even with the parents. So if a student wishes for us to be able to speak with the parent on their behalf, they must request the authorization to release student educational records, also known as the FERPA form from the counseling department, and we can only accept these directly from the student. Okay, what are the next steps? So if your student is interested in taking college classes, uh, they should begin by meeting with their high school counselor to determine if concurrent or dual enrollment is a good option for them based on their goals. The student should also work with their high school counselor to choose which Saracosa classes to select for the coming semester. Um, at this point in time, with everything being um, online, it's, they're most likely going to do this via email or maybe over the phone um, or however their high school counselors are available to meet with them. If the student needs assistance with choosing courses that will work towards their college goals, then they can work with a Saracosa counselor or advisor as well. Just again, we want to reiterate that we aren't informed about the A through G requirements or which Saracosa classes will work to fulfill the high school requirements. The next step, if the student, parent, and counselor determines that this is a good fit for the student, is to complete the Saracosa admissions application. If your student is a returning student and has already completed the application, then they will need to complete the update form through their Inside CC. Next, the student and parent will fill out the concurrent and dual enrollment form, which can be found on our website, and email it to the point of contact at your high school for approvals and to obtain a copy of your student transcript. We have uh, compiled a list of contacts for the major uh, majority of the schools in our service area um, and have listed them on the next slide. So if you need to know who to send that to at your local school, then um, we have that listed for you. 
Once the form has been approved by your high school counselor or administrator, it comes back to us for approval and enrollment. To find a fillable concurrent dual enrollment form, you can go to our website, click on the admissions and records tab, click the link that says for current high school students, and you'll find a link uh, to the form under step seven. This form must be filled out every semester that a high school student wishes to take Saracoso classes. The student can check their enrollment status by checking their inside CC and looking at which courses they are enrolled in. So if they've sent, they've submitted it and it's come back to us and they believe they should be enrolled in a class, they're going to log into their inside CC to see if they've actually been enrolled. If there is a problem and we're not able to um, enroll them, we should be in contact with them to ask any questions or let them know that, what the problems are. If a student is taking concurrent enrollment classes, then um, they will, again, need to purchase their books um, and we just recommend that they do so early to ensure that they have everything that they need prior to the start of class to ensure their success. Finally, uh, the student needs to attend on the first day. So if they are on ground, they need to be in class on the first day or if they're taking online classes, they should log into their classes by the first day. Um, they do have access to their classes the Friday before the semester begins, so they should attempt to access it to ensure that everything is working properly. Online students must log in um, by 8 p.m. on that first day to avoid being dropped from the class, so um, making sure that they've gotten in there and, and are active in it. Um, they need to take, out, take a look at the course, check out the syllabus, see if there's any assignments due immediately, um, maybe some introduction posts, and then familiarize themselves with the course. This is the list of individuals whom your student should be sending their forms to for processing at the high school. Um, in many cases, the high school counselor or contact will send the form and their transcript directly to us upon approval. But if you receive the form back after approval, you can send it to us for approval on our end and enrollment. So if you send it to your counselor and they approve it and they send you the transcript, then you can email it to us um, once you've gotten it back. We have listed uh, the contact emails for all service areas um, on our end uh, on the very last slide of this presentation. So if you do need to send it to us, we do have that information for you. If you need access to the high school contacts um, information outside of this presentation, it is available on the dual and concurrent enrollment admissions and records page, the same one that houses the dual and concurrent enrollment form. So next we have one of the most important resources uh, for you guys, it, it outlines all of what we've discussed during this presentation and so much more. This is the dual and concurrent enrollment handbook for students and parents or guardians. Um, this should have be available to you all um, on our website as well. Again, it's on that um, dual and concurrent enrollment uh, admissions and records page. Um, but it's, there's also the, the URL listed here that you can follow. Um, the handbook provides students and parents or guardians with an easy reference guide for an overview of dual and concurrent enrollment, um, student expectations, the steps to get started, and how to register for courses. It also provides information on student resources, academic information such as plagiarism and cheating, and of course, recommendations and, rec and restrictions um, and so much more. So please refer to this often, as often as needed. Um, of course, it's going to answer a lot of your questions, but you can always call us if you need any more information. So thank you for sticking around for a presentation today. Um, it was a lot of information, but again, a lot of this can be found in the handbook. And if you have questions, feel free to contact your local campus. So listed here is each campus number and the emails where you can send your forms. Um, two things that I want to highlight are that the Ridgecrest campus serves um, Ridgecrest, Trona, Indian Wells Valley students, as well as all out of area students. So if you live outside of our service area, your forms will go to the Ridgecrest email. And also that East Kern handles all Edwards, Boron, Mojave, and California City students. So um, if you live in any of those areas, you'll send your information or your forms to East Kern. So thank you once again, and um, please call us if you have any questions. <laughs>